The push-pull or Class B amplifier is widely used as output drivers, for example in audio speaker systems where RL may in fact be a speaker. So how does this work? It's a very interesting circuit in that normally uh, it amplifies each one of these transistors is only on for half of the period. So for example, if we put an AC signal into here, then during the positive cycle over here, this transistor is on during the positive cycle. Whereas during the negative cycle of the input, this transistor over here is on during the negative cycle. So the net result is that this will push current into the load when it's on, and when this one is on, it will pull current out of the load. It's not quite so easy to see this when this is run on a single supply with VCC to ground, because uh, this would be uh, would require midpoint biasing, where this voltage over here is VCC divided by two, and if the average current flowing in the circuit is zero. But uh, the application where it's very easy to see this is if this is a positive supply and this is a negative supply of equal value, minus VEE, and then you can clearly see that the current comes out of the load into the negative supply. But uh, nevertheless, the same thing is true with uh, it running on a single supply like this and, and using capacitors to couple the circuit. So one thing which should be fairly uh, evident is that the Q point, the Q point of the circuit, that the voltage collector to emitter is equal to VCC divided by two, half the supply voltage. If this was VCC and this is VEE, something of equal value, then um, the Q point would be at one of the supply values. Now, the current in the circuit, I, C, the Q point, ideally is equal to zero. Ideally, when the, you are at the zero crossings of the waveform, and there's nothing happening, the circuit should be idle and no current should be flowing. If the circuit is not biased properly, you can run into a dangerous situation where both of these transistors can be on at the same time. In that case, you can effectively short circuit the power supply and uh, blow the circuit to pieces. So to prevent that, we uh, add a biasing resistor in here. This is to minimize what's called crossover distortion. If we didn't have this resistor, these bases were directly connected, what would happen is that they would not conduct during part of the cycle. The output would look something like this. and we'd have this little crossover distortion. And the reason why that would occur is because to turn this transistor on, we need a drop of at least 0 0.7 volts, and to turn this one on, we need a drop of also 0.7 volts. So if we didn't get that, then our input signal would have to rise to 0.7 volts before this transistor came on. We'd have to fall to minus 0.7 before this one would come on. So this distortion over here we'd like to avoid called crossover distortion. So in some circuits like this, instead of having a resistor like this, which has to be very carefully chosen, uh, sometimes you'll see a pair of diodes like this. And the idea now is that you require 0.7 volts across each of them, and so running Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop, the midpoint of this thing, of course, is 0 volts, and over here it's going to be zero volts, let's say on a split supply. And then uh, the diode here compensates for the drop across here, and this distortion gets eliminated. So uh, let's say that uh, we have a circuit that which is more or less working. We've adjusted this resistor so that we minimize the crossover distortion. What do we expect the thing to do? Well, hopefully we can notice that this signal from here to here is simply an emitter follower, and likewise from here to here is simply an emitter follower. 
So we should be able to tell fairly clearly that the voltage gain will be approximately 1. Actually, slightly less than 1. And the reason is simply because it is an emitter follower. So no voltage gain in this circuit. The next thing which we can find out uh, fairly easily, hopefully, if we've uh, been able to keep track and remember all the stuff we've been looking at, is the input impedance, Z in. Now, Z in, looking into the circuit here, is simply going to be equal to, more or less, approximately, H F C times R E prime, R E prime on the diode here, in the basement interjunction, plus RL, which is basically, in this case, appears to be the emitted resistor. Now, this is true if the biasing chain is high impedance. And the biasing chain, of course, is this. So, if these resistors are high impedance, then the only thing we're going to see coming in there is HF Z times R E prime and whatever is in here. Otherwise, of course, we'd have to take this into account as it being a parallel chain. Z out is uh, by now, hopefully, we could see by inspection looking into here. Z out. You can be looking backward through, through this resistor, R E prime plus whatever it sees on the other side. And in this case, of course, we may see those resistances because they're going to be divided by HFE. Remember, as we look into the transistors this way, the impedances get magnified by beta or HFC, whereas if we look into the circuit this way, they get divided by the beta or the HFC. So R out is going to be RE prime plus whatever this network is, We'll just make it R thevenin, some combination of all these things in parallel. R thevenin divided by HFC. So that's the output in peoples. At this point, we wonder uh, what are we going to use this amplifier for? Well, we already mentioned it's used for driving speakers, but with a voltage gain of one, it doesn't seem practical. Well, it's because this is actually a power amplifier. Power amplifier. So let's see how that works. Remember that uh, power is simply equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. Now, when we're using voltage in a power calculation, we must be in units of RMS, root mean squared. It is true that we could have this peak, and then we have peak power, but most of the time we're talking about straight power, so many watts, we're talking about continuous power, not peak power. So likewise, in the speaker system, we typically talk about continuous power, although we can specify a thing called peak power as well. Now remember that voltage RMS is equal to 0 0.707 times the voltage peak. And uh, if we were looking at peak-to-peak -peak voltage, it would be half of this, so it would be also equal to 0.3535 volts peak-to-peak. Peak-to-peak is nice to specify here because on an oscilloscope, that's what we've measured. We've measured the peak-to-peak -peak signals there, and we've measured the peak-to-peak -peak signals here. So voltage peak-to-peak -peak is typically what we use. It works very nicely for uh, oscilloscopes. So therefore, the power out, that's into the load, into this load here, is going to equal the voltage that we see in the load, and we're going to specify in terms of peak to peak, so 0 0.3535 volts peak to peak. So now we're using, converting this to RMS values. If we multiply the peak to peak by 0 0.3535, we've actually got units of RMS. And then according to the definition of power, we're going to have to square it then divide by the load, RL. And of course, if we square this signal, we're going to get 
0 0.125 volts peak to peak squared divided by RL. Now, we notice uh, something interesting with this number, 0.125. That simply is as a fraction, one eighth. So the way that textbooks generally write this equation is a power out, and this will be at any given point is equal to volts peak to peak squared divided by one eighth and RL. And the maximum output occurs when volts peak to peak is equal to the complete supply voltage, in our case here, VCC. So that would, we could do a very simple calculation to find out what the maximum power of the circuit we could ever get. Just take the voltage of the power supply up here, square it, and then divide by eight times the load resistance. That'll give us the total power out. And you can clearly see that um, once the supply voltage gets uh, fairly large, up at uh, 10, 20, 30 volts, you can get an enormous amount of power out of this circuit. So there it is. Push-pull Class B amplifier is a power amplifier.